SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has his mind fixed on going to Mars. To do so, he will require a vast new spacecraft powered by a new rocket engine, unlike anything that has ever been seen before. Step forward, Raptor, the future of SpaceX's endeavors. The Raptor is SpaceX's stage combustion engine designed specifically for the company's Starship launch system, which aims to be the largest rocket in the world. In this video, we will be analyzing the spectacular invention that is the Raptor engine. But before we dig in deeper, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. The Space Exploration Technologies Corporation chief, Elon Musk, has announced that his company will increase the production rate of the Raptor rocket engine. SpaceX plans to expand its payload delivery capacity to various orbits and planetary bodies, and Starship is at the center of all of these plans. Crucial to its success is the Raptor, which sits at the heart of any plans of a Martian settlement through the ability to burn a fuel easily producible from the common environment. Raptor has been designed to power the new reusable vehicle SpaceX is building. The Starship spacecraft and the Super Heavy rocket combined, these vast machines are designed to take up to 100 people into space, possibly to the Moon and Mars, with a tentative launch of humans around the Moon planned in 2023. The engine has been developed for the better part of a decade, going through a number of iterations. At its core, it is like other engines, burning chemical fuel to produce thrust but its use of liquid oxygen and methane, something largely unprecedented in the rocket industry, and its innovative design means that it just might be SpaceX's ace in the hole when it comes to exploring the solar system. That, combined with the Starship's fully reusable design, means that humans can travel to Mars, harvest the planet's resources, and use the fuel as a return trip. The reusability is a key aspect. As Musk has said, each engine needs to be capable of flying up to 1,000 times to support the ambitious operations of Starship. This is a major challenge. The most reused engines in the space exploration history were the main engines on each space shuttle, which flew up to only a few dozen times each. The other is the use of methane. Methane has been dubbed as the future of rocket fuel, especially for the travels to Mars. This is because the red planet is abundant in materials like ice and carbon dioxide, which can be easily used to make the methane-based rocket fuel for a return trip home. More importantly, methane prevents a buildup of deposits in the engines compared to other fuels like kerosene, a process known as coking, while its higher performance allows for lower costs. Raptor also uses what is known as a full-flow stage combustion engine, only the third engine in history to employ this technique. The previous two attempts at such an engine, one in the Soviet Union in the 1960s and the other in the US in the early 2000s, never made it beyond testing. A full flow staged combustion engine refers to how a pump spins a turbine to drive the engine, using what is called a pre-burner to get this process going by injecting a small amount of fuel. Both streams, oxidizer and fuel, are mixed completely in the gas phase before they enter the combustion chamber. Normally, some of the propellant is expended in a traditional open cycle engine to start this process, but Raptor will use every drop of propellant available, making it one of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. The end result is that Raptor has a much higher pressure than Merlin, about three times greater, making it the highest pressure rocket engine in existence and leading its aforementioned larger thrust than the Merlin despite its smaller size. In 2016, Musk referred to the insane pressure inside the main chamber of the engine, 300 bars, which required the development of a new metal alloy. And now, recently, Elon Musk announced that the engine reached 330 bar of chamber pressure without exploding. That's 31 bar higher than the engine achieved back in February 2019, when it beat the previous record holder of an operational engine, Russia's RD-180. Of course, Raptor's other major innovation over its predecessor is the use of methane, which harkens back to SpaceX's ultimate goal. SpaceX is not the only company moving to methane, as rival firm Blue Origin, headed by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, is also developing its own methane engine, called the Blue Engine, or BE-4. With numerous benefits, it is a switch that almost seems long overdue. Most previous engine rockets have relied on using fuels like kerosene in place of methane. But the main benefit of using methane is that it has a higher performance than other fuels, meaning that the rocket can be smaller. Its lower cost too means that the total cost of launching can be brought down. 
This could be crucial because the number of Raptor engines SpaceX is looking to build is immense. To say the least, each Starship vehicle is designed to fly with six Raptor engines, along with 35 on the Super Heavy rocket, a total of 41 per launch. SpaceX's biggest rocket so far, the Falcon Heavy, launches with 28 Merlin engines, 27 on the bottom and one on the upper stage. With the number of launches SpaceX is planning for Starship and Super Heavy, their rate of production will need to increase significantly. In a recent set of tweets, Musk highlighted that SpaceX plans to produce at least 800 Raptor engines annually with a maximum production rate of 1,000. Given that a single Raptor aims to produce 230 metric tons of thrust. If SpaceX uses all the engines that it produces in a year, then as a whole, the company's rockets will have generated 184 kilotons of thrust in a year. In comparison, during the first half of this year, the Falcon 9 rockets generated 15 kilotons of thrust by launching 20 Falcon 9 flights. The Falcon 9 uses nine Merlin engines, 1D open gas generator rocket engines, capable of outputting 95 tons of thrust to generate a total thrust of 855 tons. SpaceX will now conduct an orbital test flight, which will also rely on Starship's larger first stage rocket, which will propel it on all of its space missions. This stage aims to use 33 Raptor engines for 7.6 kilotons of thrust, allowing only two Starship launches to generate all the thrust which SpaceX has achieved in 2021 so far. Sharing more details about the Raptor's current performance, Musk also shared his indecision about the engines equipping the Starship second stage. While the first stage engines have nozzles designed to operate in an atmosphere, those in the second have more leeway with their nozzle width. Larger width allows for more thrust and Musk deliberated on whether to use six vacuum optimized engines on the second stage instead of the 3x3 atmospheric vacuum combination SpaceX has focused on until now. Two key differences between the vacuum and the sea level engines are their thrust and specific impulse. The sea level engines generate less thrust and reach a lower specific impulse on the vacuum engines due to the Earth's atmosphere dictating mass flow and fluid dynamics for their operation. Specific impulse is the ratio of an engine's exhaust gas velocity to the speed of the gravitational acceleration, and a higher value is an indication of an efficient design. According to the latest from Musk, the Raptor vacuum engine has a 378 ISP, implying that it can output thrust significantly faster than gravitational acceleration. Its ISP is slightly higher than the sea level engines, which is believed to currently stand around 360. The Raptor's power levels are impressive, and its strength should become clearer during the more hop tests. The ship looks set to stand around 400 feet tall when paired with the Super Heavy rocket. As SpaceX aims to host more hop tests past the 150 meter mark, the visual of a giant ship soaring into the sky will likely do more to communicate the Raptor's impressive strength to the general public. The Raptor engine has absolutely revolutionized the world of aerospace. Let us know your thoughts about this brilliant creation in the comments below. Congrats on having a great attention span. We have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.